This is Joshua Self, and I'm going to be explaining the comprehensive problem number five. And I'm going to also be reading off of my actual paper because um, <laughs> I have a hard time reading my own handwriting, so sorry about that. Um, problem number one says, Determine the fixed and variable portions of the utility cost using the high-low method. And I can see over here, I, ha I got the variable cost per unit by, what does it say? Utility cost at high point minus utility cost at low point, which is 740 minus 600 over the high point minus the low point, which is was 1200 minus 500. And that together equals 0.2 or 20 cents. Um, so that's where you get the variable cost per unit. And then the total variable cost is 500 times the 20 cents that we got, which equals 100. And then you take the fixed cost from the high point, which is 600, minus what we got for the total variable cost, which equals $500. For two, it says determine the contribution margin per case. So the selling price per case was $100, and then you get all the variable costs, which the direct materials for the cream base was $2, for natural oils was $9, for bottles and mixing were $6 each, for filling was $120, or $1.20, utilities was $0.20, cents. the selling commissions was $20, and you add all those up to get $44.40, .40, and you take that minus the $100 to get $55.60. Um, for number three, it says determine the fixed cost per month, including the utility fixed cost from part one. So that's what I did. The utilities for part one is 500. The facility lease was 1400. No, sorry, 14,000. The equipment d depreciation was 4300. And the supplies was 660. And you add those all up to get 19,460. For four, it said determine the break-even number of cases per month. So I got the break-even number of cases equals 19,460, or the total fixed cost per month, over $55.60, or the commission margin per case, which equals 350 cases. Number five, this is now in part B. Number five, it says prepare the August production budget. So I got the production budget. We got sales expected which is 1500 we got desired finished goods for inventory august 31st which is 175 you add those together to get the total cases required for august which is 1675 estimated finished goods inventory for august 1st which is 300 and then you take the 300 minus it from the 1675 and you get 1375 this is what these arrows are for, by the way. That's just to help me to remember how to explain it. Six says prepare the August direct materials purchases budget. So the direct materials purchase budget. You see we got cream or the cream base, the oil, and the bottles. And these, this little OZ up here is for ounces. That was just to help me remember. The units required for production for cream was 137500 For oil, it was 41250 And for bottles, 16 thousand five hundred and then for the desired materials inventory for august 31st we got one thousand for cream three hundred and sixty for oil and two hundred and forty for bottles and then you add those two together to get the total materials right uh required for august which is for cream is one hundred thirty eight thousand five hundred for oil is forty one thousand six hundred and ten um, and for bottles, it's 16740 Sorry, I have a hard time reading my own handwriting. Um, and then for the, and then you have the estimated materials inventory of August 31st for, for cream was 250 for oil was 290 and for bottles was 600 And then you take the estimated materials and then you subtract them from the total materials required to get the direct materials to be purchased, which for cream is... 138,250 for oil is 41,320 and for bottles is 16,140 and then you take and then you get the unit price 
which is for cream is two cents for oil is 30 cents and for bottles is 50 cents and then you take the unit price and multiply it to the direct materials to be purchased which then you get the total direct materials to be purchased yeah the total direct materials to be purchased which for cream is 2765 for oil it's 12,396 I think I'm kinda messed up writing the sixes and the nines and then for bottles is 8,070 and then all of these added together will get you a total of $23,231. For seven it says prepare the August direct labor budget. So the, for, for the direct labor budget we have the time per case which is for mixing was 20 and for filling was 5 and then you got the labor rate per hour which for mixing was 18 and the fill for filling was $14.40 and then the cost per case for mixing was 6 and for filling was one twenty one a dollar and 20 cents and then the total cost for mixing was 8250 and the filling was 6 16 uh, 1650 for a total of uh, and, when, oh, and then you add these two together to get a total of 900 for 9900 for 8 it says prepare the august factory overhead budget which for the, we have the factory overhead budget and for utilities the fixed cost was 500 the variable cost was 275 and so the total cost was 7 775 the facility lease the fixed cost was 14000 no variable cost so the total was 14000 for equipment depreciation, we had 4,300 with the with no variable cost, so the total is 4,300. For supplies, we had 600 with no variable costs. Oh, sorry. For supplies, we had a fixed cost of 660 with no variable cost, so the total was 660 dollars. And then the total for the fixed was 9, 19,460 with a variable of 275 for a total cost for the uh, for a total total cost of 19 what is that it, oh cut off the picture here cut off i guess it says 19735 and then we get to 9 it says prepare the august budgeted income statement including selling expenses which is what i got the sales which is 150000 the cost of goods sold, direct materials, and the direct materials was the cream base, which was 2,750 oils, is 12,375, and bottles of 8,250 added together gets you 23,375. And then you have the direct labor, which is 9,900, the factory overhead, which is 19,735. When you add these together, you get fifty three thousand and ten and then you subtract that from the sales to get the gross margin which is ninety six thousand nine hundred and ten and then you have the selling commission which is thirty thousand and you subtract that from the gross margin to get the net income of sixty six thousand nine hundred oh and ninety I'm sorry this was ninety not ten my bad like I said, I can't read my own handwriting. Oh, I can see it clear on here. <laughs> and then we get to part C, and we got 10. Determine and interpret the direct materials price and quantity variances for the three materials. And I got the direct materials price variance for the cream, oil, and bottles. The actual price for the cream base was 16 cent. No, 0.016 cents but for oil was 32 cents and for bottles was 42 cents and you had the standard price for cream which was two cents for oil was 30 cents and for bottles was 50 cents and then you take the standard cost minus the actual pro oh, I mean sorry standard price minus the actual price to get the difference of negative point oh oh four cents for cream and for oil you get the you get point you get two cents and then for bottles you get 
negative eight cents and then you get the actual quantity which is for cream was 153,000 for oil was 46,500 and for bottles which was 18,750 and then you take the actual quantity multiply it for, with the difference to get the direct materials price variance which for cream is negative 612 which is favorable for oil we got 930 which is unfavorable I guess I forgot to put a U there and then it cuts off here but on my paper it says negative 1500 for bottles which is favorable and then the direct materials quantity variance is kind of this how we do it the same way we did this with just different numbers and labels we get the actual we get the actual quantity for cream which is 153,000 for oil is 46,500 and for bottles is 8700 8750 and then for we get the standard quality for cream which is 150,000 for oil is 45,000 and for bottles it's 18,000 and then again we take the standard quantity minus the actual quantity to get 3,000 for cream 1,500 for oil and 750 for bottles and then you get have the standard price which is two cents for cream 30 cents for oil and 50 cents for bottles and you take the standard price multiply it by the difference to get the direct materials quantity variance which we get sixty sixty dollars we get sixty dollars for cream which is unfavorable we get four hundred and fifty dollars for oil which is unfavorable and then we get three hundred and seventy five dollars for bottles which is unfavorable and of course it cuts off in this picture for whatever reason because I'm not a good picture taker I guess and finally we get to the last questions for 11 it says determine and interpret the direct labor rate and time variances for the two departments so for 11 again we got the direct labor rate variance and the direct labor time variance it's kind of the same kind of the same way we did the last one um, you got the actual rate which is 18 which is eighteen dollars and twenty cents for mixing fourteen dollars for filling and then we get the standard rate of 18 for mixing and $14.40 for filling. Again, I guess I didn't write it here, but you're supposed to subtract the standard rate from the actual rate to get the difference. And you get $0.20 cents for mixing, negative $0.40 cents for filling. And then, you get the, and then you get the actual time, which is 487 and a half hours I believe it's hours I didn't write it down but I'm believing it's hours and then you get 140 for filling and then you take the actual time multiply it by the difference to get the direct labor rate variance which for mixing is ninety seven dollars and fifty cents which is unfavorable and then you get negative fifty six dollars for filling which is favorable and then we go on to the direct labor time variance and we get the actual time for mixing, I didn't see. I just kind of wrote it on the same one, so the mixing just kind of like this whole row is mixing, this whole row is filling. Um, for the the actual time for mixing was 487 and a half hours, and again 140 hours for filling. The standard time was 500 for mixing, 125 for filling uh, in hours. Sorry. So the difference between those, like I said again. You take the standard, subtract it from the actual, get the difference, which for mixing was negative 12 out, 12 and a half hours. And for filling was 15 hours. So, and then you get the standard rate, which is $18 for mixing and fourteen forty for filling. And again, take the standard rate multiply it by the difference to get the direct labor time variance which for mixing was negative two hundred and twenty five dollars which is favorable and for
filling was two hundred and sixteen dollars, which is unfavorable. And then for twelve, we have determine and in, determine and interpret the factory overhead controllable variance. So we got the factory overhead controllable variance, which we got the actual variable overhead, which is three hundred five dollars. Then you have the f the variable overhead at standard cost, which is three hundred. You take that, you subtract it from the actual variable overhead, which you get five dollars. Then we get to thirteen which is determine and interpret the factory overhead volume variance which you get the normal volume which is 1600 the actual volume which is 1500 and again you subtract the actual volume from the normal volume you get a difference of 100 and you get the fixed what does that say fixed factory overhead rate sorry i don't even i don't even know what i wrote there which is twelve point one six two five dollars so then you take the fixed factory overhead rate and multiply it by the difference to get the factory overhead volume variance of one thousand two hundred sixteen dollars and twenty five cents which is unfavorable and then for fourteen it asked why are the standard direct labor and direct material costs in the calculations for part ten and eleven based on the actual 15,000, no, 1,500 case production volume rather than the planned 13, 13, uh, 1,375 cases of production used in the budgets for parts 6 and 7. And I said variable cost of the budget must flex to the actual production volume so the variance can be compared across the same production volumes. I hope that hope that explained enough I'm still trying to ant I'm still trying to understand a lot of it myself so I tried to explain it the best way I could I know I probably missed a, a few steps here and there but I'm trying my best so